Greetings, dear viewer. This could be you. I'm serious. This could be you getting promoted into Challenger. But it's not. Not yet, anyways. Four weeks ago, I had a dream. And in that dream, Shen appeared to me. He looked at me and said, I'm tired of top lane, Petu. It is time to unleash my full potential. It is time to play mid lane. So I locked in Shen mid lane and never looked back. In just a few weeks, playing Shen mid lane got me from Diamond 1 to 1000 LP Challenger on Europe West. And in this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know in order to do the same. You will invest 25 minutes of your time and watch a Grandmaster Shen mid game together with me as I analyze and break down the secrets of this absolute LP printer of a pick. I will cover the micro, the macro and the motivation behind this off-meta playstyle. And as always, please enjoy the video. Alright, so this is an absolute banger of a Shen mid game and I will commentate it now, give you my thorough analysis on how I play the game so you get to learn precisely how to win games on Shen mid lane. Now this invade, by the way, I do this every game and you can't get me to not do it, okay? It's whether I'm red side, blue side, I'm always going try brush invade through the wall here or next to the wall, hugging the wall. And now, most likely it will happen like this, right? Your gold ADC will just run at them and you won't get anything done. But then, you just go in and you have taunt, okay? Shen has the perfect level 1 invade because you have basically point and click CC, hard CC on the opponents, okay? E flash. So whenever I see somebody, I just go E flash. Doesn't matter what the situation, I'm just going for it. Here I don't even need to flash, so we just E on the opponent, and then Ignite, and that's already one kill for us. The, the team who makes aggressive plays, the team who is aggressive, proactive, always has the advantage at the level 1, okay? So I just want you to do something level 1, it doesn't matter what kind of cheese it is, just do something. Here I might even taunt in, but I'm not crazy enough to do it, so we're just gonna run out. And we can settle a bit, get down to the laning phase, okay? So we're playing versus said we're gonna dodge this Q right there, yeah, that's no problem because I know he's gonna try to hit me with that Q. And ideally, you would like to start Q, level 1, okay. But I'm invading almost every game, so that's why you see me starting E. Now, with E start, what you can do is stack up your grasp and then E in, auto attack once, trigger grasp, also shield bash, and then run out, okay. So you're gonna take mega short trade, but it works versus these opponents, okay, most of the time. It's pretty good. Now, the level 1 uh, is usually sends a really strong suit, but if your E start, like I said, it's not that strong. But you start to get really strong around level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. So pre-6, you're the strongest champion in the game. Now, <laughs> some of you might say that's not true, but I disagree. Like, I will beat your Darius, I will beat your... Okay, I won't beat Set, but I will beat your Set, you know? So it's, it's, it's not about, like necessarily playing the lane completely optimally, it's about just sending a message to your opponent, okay? So here, for example, I'm level 3, he's level 2, I just taunt in, go for the trade. Now, look at my Q placement here. Look at Blade, okay? You see Blade. I always keep it aggressively. This is the number one thing to punish mid laners, okay? What we do is we keep our Blade aggressively. Now, we get ganked by Rengar here, and this was actually a very... Uh, high IQ Rengar jump because he eat me mid-air and I could not react to it. Because I'm slow, I'm not a good player. But this is precisely what I'm about to show you here, okay guys? You don't need to be faker in order to get challenger. You don't even need to be good at the game in order to get challenger. You can just pick Shen mid lane, learn how macro works, and then save your Kartus jungle with an if never mind. We're just gonna taunt in, get the freebie, and then we're gonna shove the wave out. And you can notice my buy here, right? Okay, this is itemization. I go Lucidity Boots first item every game. Now, here I just do a quick roam. And it doesn't result into anything, but I want to kill the Soraka, okay? I have Ignite Flash, I have everything ready. So we're just gonna do the most slow E-Flash you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, like, that was, that was like on the last tick possible that I flashed right there. But we get a free kill for it. But regarding the itemization, what I wanted to say is that you usually uh, don't mind me just uh, killing the Ezreal under tower like a complete psychopath. But this is what I do on Shen mid. I just make plays everywhere. Because 
you know what this does? It sets me behind, right? Because I'm not getting any CS. I got a kill, that's pretty nice. But the opposing ADC is not able to farm because he's dead. And that's an advantage. Because gold on Shen is not as valuable as gold on any other champion. Now we get to the build, right? You see, I'm already looking for the roam. I'm already going for it. But this is full build already. I'm full build on Shen. All you need is Lucidity Boots first item and then Bummy Cinder on top for doing more damage and being more tanky, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm constantly applying pressure somewhere on the map. And pre-6 I'm already doing this. I'm just roaming down, I'm doing stuff, okay? Maybe it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter, because what you did is you learned, right? I just die and this looks completely int. But it doesn't matter because you're Shen mid lane. Now let's calm down a little bit, okay? We calm down a little bit. We have level 6 and now we are ready to ult our teammates. So we are just gonna keep an eye out on the HP bars at all times. Now you can tell me that I should have ulted there to save my misfortune. But I don't think it's worth. The reason why is because I don't get any kills from there. Because I don't have my flash up so I can't make an aggressive play, right? So we're just gonna calm down and we're just gonna take our time and bait the opponent into coming, going in, right? And now we can finish the kill on the airshell. I still have my ignite, I'm waiting for it. I'm probably gonna ignite here to finish off the kill. And somehow Lulu manages to die anyways, but it's okay. We had our lucidity boots, we have our ultimate hunter stacks going up. So our ult cooldown will be really low. And we're gonna start making plays all the time, guys. I usually want to shove the wave out first before roaming. That's something you would ideally like to do, but I don't even always do that. You don't have to do it because you're playing from the central lane. You're playing mid lane, right? There's a random Jenger, a Renger that jumps out of the bush, but we don't care about that necessarily. Now, the Ezreal here is just caught by my patient E usage. I'm being really chillaxed, right? I'm using my E at the last second when I know it's guaranteed. And now I know I'm stronger than this Rengar, so I can take this fight. I still have my W ready. And I go for the wackiest Q flash you've ever seen. I just bend it like Beckham over here, right? And somehow I manage to screw this kill up. But then I look at Lulu over there. I'm gonna ult on him. May Rengar jumps on me. I don't know. Soraka escapes. Everybody's escaping. And Rengar jumps in and I pick up the freebie. Two seconds until E. I want to go for Soraka. I have E. Okay, we kill him. Now, can we survive this? Most likely not. We will try to walk towards our blade to get the W to block one out attack, but I will be dead right there. We already have five deaths, but what we are doing is we are turning this game into a controlled fiesta. And I'm the one controlling it. This is the secret of Shen mid lane, guys. We turn games into fiestas, but you are the controller. You are the puppet master behind those fiestas. And at this point, like, Zed is one level up on me, but I am Zen. Oh, no, wait, I'm not Zed. I'm Shen, right? I'm Shen. And I know that I'm stronger than the other mid laner because every single assassin in the game loses to Shen. Now, maybe if it's hyperfed or something, he's gonna win. But I can just go at him, I can taunt him, and I can make this play work. Like, Shen mid lane beats so many champions, it's kinda crazy. Especially melee matchups, you can punish them really hardly. And now you're gonna say, okay, but what if they pick range champion? Uh, I'm gonna get poked out of lane. No. Relax, okay. We have Doran's shield. We have second wind. We are sustaining up. That's the goal. We have our room page. It's perfect for playing Shen, okay? We have Doran shield and second wind. And we use Q, pass Q in combination with passive key barrier to deny as much damage as possible. Sometimes just blocking one out like with W as well. Just maintaining HP. Those are the tough matchups. But where we win a good matchup like this versus Zed, we want to be punishing the opponent all the time. And right now, my eyes are on the minimap. Every second I'm looking at the minimap. I will be moving my camera, I will just look at where my team is, what their situation is, what their HP bars are, what is the intention of the opponent, what is their intent, what are they gonna do. And it's a, it's a form of art, like using Shen ultimate at the right time, because you want to bait your opponents in. Now we are gonna ult a misfortune, because he's just walking up and just running at them like a madman, and this is exactly what I like to see from my ADC. We're gonna play it patiently here. I'm not taunting in because I know that my team can't follow up, right? You don't want to just suicide. That is not the plan on Shen mid lane. You just want to play these fiestas in a very controlled manner. And once it gets to later game, what we will be doing is we will be kind of peeling for our team. We are not a damage dealer. We are not a tank like Orn. We are something in between. We are not a support, but we are a warden. A warden is what you call this role. 
Now I want to go for the Soraka, right? I have E flash, so you can see the lucidity boots just doing work because my playstyle on Shen mid lane is you go E flash, E flash, E flash, E flash, jump on the opponent, engage all the time. We are making plays, but you can just randomly engage, okay? You have to know that you can win the 1v1 or the 2v1 or something. So you want to take fights that you can win. And right here, I actually go for the Frozen Heart. Now some of you might wonder, like, Pitu, why are you going Frozen Heart? Shen doesn't even have mana. And the reason is, this item is pretty good, to be honest. Now I know some of you can say, actually, it's not very so gold efficient anymore because they nerfed the cost. Mm -mm. Attack speed slow. That's all I gotta tell you. Attack speed slow. Because when the opponent's attack speed is slow, slowed by Frozen Heart, they will be paralyzed, okay? Because these players, they want to kite at their attack speed. And they will cancel auto attacks. And this is the reason why we buy Frozen Heart. Now, I had a good idea there with my blade placement to protect my carries, but unfortunately it was not right uh, on them. And now I'm just gonna start spanking them, okay? They're equal level with me, but I just go at them. Because I'm Shen, right? This is what Shen mid lane does. Melee champions must fear me, okay? This is a double kill, and we just get this for free. No one's gonna respect this pick. Now let me explain why mid lane is actually the better role for Shen, okay? It's not top lane. Number one is the central location, right? Because we can ult from the middle of the map and then just walk back to lane. Instead of losing 5,000 tower platings that we do in top lane, we're just gonna walk back mid lane, maybe lose one plating at the most. And these guys are challenging me. They're walking up to me. They don't know what Shen does, right? And no one's gonna know what Shen does in your games. Trust me, guys. This champion has so much damage if you use your Q properly. This is number one thing, guys. You have to get empowered Qs. That is how you deal damage. Now, some of you might say, like, I don't actually deal that much damage. Now the Israel dies. And this is because we just go in, we do damage. All right? Okay, relax. Relax a bit. Some key things about and we just look bot lane and ult because that's like these games are gonna be hectic okay when you're playing shen mid lane because you're gonna be making plays non-stop full ability haste ultimate hunter ultimate ability haste and we're just gonna be ulting non-stop making plays so as i was saying mid lane has better matchups than top lane now you might think petu what are you what are you talking about that's not true how, how can top lane have worse matchups than mid lane it's because top lane has giga broken champions okay the enemy will pick Mordekaiser, Darius, Seth, uh, Fiora, okay? Trust me, they always pick this stuff. But on Shen mid lane, you don't face those guys, because they're not in mid lane. Instead you will face Zed, Katarina, Victor, Talon, Kassadin, maybe a Syndra here and there. Sometimes an Azir, okay? Azir and Anivia, those are tough ones, but those are the only tough matchups Shen mid has. All the others, all melee champions, you beat them, okay? Looks like we're gonna be dead here, but it happens sometimes. You don't have to be perfect player to make this work. We're just gonna relax a bit. I have one more point regarding mid lane, why it's better. And it's precisely the unawareness of your opponents, right? Mid laners don't know Shen's damage. Now top laners, they might be a little bit familiar. They know that Shen level 3 with Ignite can do stuff, okay? But mid laners, they don't respect it. They can't respect it. They don't know what this champion does. And when you suddenly hit them with the empowered Q combo for six Q auto attacks in a row, and then ignite on top and flash for a grasp job to kill them off, they're not gonna know what hit them. Now we look bot lane, okay? We wait with ultimate. Be patient, guys. Be patient. We go on misfortune because he got engaged on by Ezreal, then without the Ezreal, and now what we're looking to do is kill the Soraka, right? We're just gonna do one flash auto attack because Kartus ulti will finish her off. And that's fine. And the reason why we can do this, I'm flashing for every single play I see, is because I went Ionian Boots, right? We're gonna be a playmaker. The way you play Shen mid lane, it's almost like a Twister Fate, okay? It's a tank Twister Fate with damage and peeling. Uh, are you hearing this correctly? We're playing a tank Twister Fate with damage and peeling. That is Shen mid lane. Like, this is your ticket to free ELO, I'm, I'm not even joking, like, like, I was coaching this one Shen player, or it's not a Shen player, sorry, sorry, just Finnish mid laner, he was saying like, Beto, I don't know, man, I'm stuck in ELO hell, I can't make it to Challenger this season, and I said, yo, let me, let me give you a coaching session, okay, we're gonna look at Shen mid lane, and the guy went on like an 8 winning streak and guaranteed 1k LP Challenger, 
So I know this works, right? It's it's not a joke. Like you might think it's a joke, but it's not. This this is good stuff. Now, one thing that I do have to say is regarding the itemization, uh, it will change quite much. And and this will be pre-season's fault, right? Because there's gonna be new items. But the one thing that won't change is Ionian boots of lucidity. I will still go Ionian boots if I'm recalling pre six and then Bami Cinder. Those are the items you need to care about. Then afterwards, maybe new mythic or something. I don't know. But Bami Cinder and Ionian boots. That's all you're gonna need to know. Then you maybe go Anathema sometimes. I think Anathema is a really broken item, but maybe that's a topic for another video. We're now gonna look at how I eat out this Rengar when he jumps on top. And just look, guys. Like, what is he up? Like, what can he do? He just has 90 ability haste, Shen. Walking on top of him, perma taunt, perma slow with Q. Like, what are the enemies gonna do, right? This champion is completely busted. I've been saying it for three years, right? Why does Shen have the best win rate, even though everyone says he's weak? Because he has impact on the games. And that is what we are trying to achieve, right? We want to impact the games in a positive way, not in a negative way. Now, sometimes, you know, your jungler dies and then the opposing team steals the dragon. It happens. Get over it. We're just gonna play to perfection, guys. We will try to reach perfection, but we won't reach it, but it's okay. We're gonna make mistakes. Now, right here, be patient with E. Did you see that? I waited for Ezreal to E before I E. And now we're gonna E over the wall when he is. Because I have 90 ability haste. And the reason why we can do this is actually something that happened to Shen a couple of patches ago. It's maybe already like two months ago. But they just buffed his energy region just, just a tiny bit. And what this allows you to do is allows you to go for really high ability haste builds. And look at the way I'm peeling, right? Now, it doesn't matter that Misfortune died. What matters is we kept her alive for three seconds more. And in those three seconds, your ADC is gonna do more damage than your entire kit. Okay? Your ADC probably does more damage than your entire kit in one auto attack. So if we can keep the ADC alive just a little bit longer, that's gonna be worth, okay? Your job as Shen in teamfights is to keep your teammates alive. And the way we do this is we E and we W and we place the sword on top of our allies and wait for the Z to jump in. And then we W to block auto attack and then we're gonna E him when he comes out of the ultimate. And we're gonna be peeling, right? We're gonna be a support. But then sometimes you have to be aggressor. You have to be the guy who goes in. And this is what happens in this fight, I'm pretty sure. Now we get a nice pick on the Z, and now we are gonna look at the enemy carry. Okay, he wasted E, and there we go in, right? The way I did that, by the way, was flash E this time. And the reason why we go flash E is because um, it's actually slightly longer range than E flash. Now most of the time, don't get me wrong, E flash is gonna be better, but if you want to hit max range targets, you want to go flash E, because it makes use of a mechanic called lollipopping, which is basically when a skill shot is at the end of its range, it's gonna get like this increased range kind of in a, uh, in a sphere around the target, and you're gonna hit a longer range, just trust me, because when you E flash, um, it's gonna be interrupted early on, right? Because you E, and then when you flash, it's gonna be interrupted. You can't get it at the last second, un unless you're Faker, and even Faker can't get it on the last second. So, just trust me on this. If you want to go really max range, and it doesn't matter if the opponent can react to it, then you flash E. But if you want to go fast, shorter range, maybe do like triangle towns or something, then you go E flash. But those are some like minor details on the Shen gameplay. Now, you can see that actually um, my build is very, um, how do you say it, it's, it's quite armor focused, but this was only at first because I went Anathema's chains and put it on Gwen. This is some itemization things. So you want to build uh, versus these comps that have one uh, certain damage dealer, so they have one AP or only one AD. You want to go Anathema's chains and use Anathema's on the guy who's the solo damage type, right? And in this game it was Gwen. So first we build armor and then we build anathemas and put it on the AP dealer. But when we get to a little bit later game, we realize that the Ezreal is doing all the damage. So I rebound the anathemas to Ezreal and then we build some magic resist to deal with Gwen. But this is just some slight itemization things. You notice how I use my W there, by the way. I block damage on my jungler and I know you guys aren't doing this because you need to be doing this every single fight. 
Now this recall is like, it's it's a bit controversial because I can't actually get any items there. I only gain a slight amount of health and it looks like my Cartus dies. And you can notice this is, this is not like a stomp or anything. This game is pretty even. Anyone can win at this point. But what we have as a revantage is we have Shen, okay? And we have control over the game. Because we control from the mid lane. We make plays, we deny plays. That's what we do. Because when you play Shen, you apply, apply like this global debuff on the opposition, okay? Because they cannot make a play when Shen ultimate is up. Now, they will try to do it, but they can't. Okay, because you will ult and you will block the play. So whenever you play Shen, automatically your opponents are gonna play worse. Now just think about that, okay? When you pick this champion, your opponents are already playing worse by default. Because they have to respect Shen ultimate. And if they don't respect it, then you punish them. This is a, some of the strengths of Shen mid lane. And now you might wonder, like, Petu, but how did you actually come up with this stuff? Like, what makes you go pick Shen mid lane? Like, what happens inside uh, that reptile brain of yours to pick this champion mid lane? And the answer is, is uh, I thought it would be funny. Like, mid Shen go, brrr, you know? And then it turns out it's, it's pretty darn good. And sometimes you just, like, get a new pick and you're, you're kind of feeling it. Maybe you go... 80% win rate, you know how it is. Sometimes you just go that, like in Master, you so sometimes you go 20 game winning streak. It happens. And then you realize, oh, wait, I'm already 800 LP. Maybe I can go for 1k LP. And then you play a couple of more games now. Obviously on my climb, I had some top Shen games as well. And look at the opposition not respecting me again. This ADC jumps into me, okay? I'm punishing him. I'm going in with a taunt. Now, the Ezreal, to be fair, is, is probably doing crazy amounts of damage. And I'm gonna be really careful here. Now, when the Misfortune tries to go use the Hexgate, I, I might do a little bit of the troll. And and it might just be that um, the Misfortune is in a bit of a danger zone now, because I, I, I interrupted her uh, Hexgate gate. But uh, it happens sometimes. Now we will try to keep her alive, okay? There's a Zed uh, ju jumping over, and I don't know what's going on, okay? I'm low on energy. This is one thing that happens on Shen, okay? When you're team fighting, but you can't hit the opponents, you're gonna run out of energy. So you have to be really conservative with your Q usage, okay? Don't just use Q randomly, because when you have this amount of ability haste that I'm running, you have like 70 ability haste or something, you're gonna have your Q dance up more than you should use them, okay? If you have blades, in a good position, blade in a good position. You don't want to queue randomly just to ruin the position because you're gonna lose energy and if you can't auto attack anything, you're not gonna regain energy back. Because Shen regains energy whenever he hits an enemy with his spell. And this is from his E passive. But basically, uh, the one thing you need to know is if you don't have a target, don't use Q just randomly. Although there are exceptions to this rule. Because sometimes what you can do is you can queue preemptively to get six uh, or three Q stacks ready. And then you can taunt in, do a couple of Q out attacks and then Q again. So you have technically like more damage in the burst scenario. But this is just something you have to kind of learn by playing Shen. But trust me guys, you play 20 games of this champion and you're already gonna start learning. Now, I know this might seem kind of like, how do you say it? Like, uh, doesn't make sense, Beto, because I've been playing this champion already for uh, six years. I've been playing this champion for six years. But but trust me, like I have the guides, right? I, I've done the hard work already. I've found out the technology. I've been in the laboratory with sending help, right? We've been doing this. So you don't need to learn everything from scratch. You can just watch Art of Shen. Shen guide, it has everything that this champion can do, right? And then you maybe invest one hour into watching that. Maybe invest one hour into practicing some e-flashes in practice tool. And maybe you suddenly reach Master Tier for the first time. Maybe you reach Grandmaster. Maybe you reach, I don't know, Platinum. It doesn't matter. But I'm telling you guys, this champion is so much fun. It can control the games like no other champion can. Because it feels like I'm actually in control of the games. When you play this from mid lane, you are already, like, you are basically choosing how the games go. And this is what I love about this champion. Because if you play poorly, you're gonna lose. Because you actually, like, 
you get outscaled so hard it's not even funny. Every single champion in this game outscales you. Okay. And this is this is facts. Like I I probably have like 20% win rate when it gets to 50 minutes plus, okay? It's not funny, you get outscaled. But that is because you did not do your job. You have to end these games pre-30 minutes, pre-20 minutes. That's what you do on Sen. Now, I wish you the best of luck, best of luck in your solo queue games. Shout out to Simply for climbing and uh, yeah, thanks for watching this far. Appreciate it guys.